Today we're going to talk about whether or not you should put your shop on vacation mode or shops on vacation mode or whether you should extend processing times. This question is a very popular question that gets repeatedly asked, um, not just in our group, in several groups. And um, there's always some confusion whether or not um, going on vacation affects your shop or not, meaning sales when you come back or not. And I want to finally discuss it and give you guys the answer. So you guys can make, you know, um, a decision for yourself, okay? Um, so let's discuss first why we want to choose either one. When you're in the position where you're like, okay, I gotta put my shop on vacation, should I do it, should I not? There are several reasons why you may consider it, okay? Um, and you guys can comment down below the last time you needed to extend your processing times or go on vacation, um, or maybe even without the quotation marks, go on vacation. Why was that? Comment down below. Um, I will tell you the most common reasons I see are because people are going actually physically on vacation, whether it be a long weekend, whether it be a week, two weeks, whatever. Okay, even a very, very long period of time. Um, so that's the first reason I see. Second reason is a family emergency, and that could range from many different things, such as somebody's sick, uh, you have to care for somebody, um, having a baby, many different types of family type emergencies, give or take. And, um, you know, th that could range, you know. Um, and I mentioned already having a baby as another one um, where you probably would need to take some time off. Okay, we'll discuss all this in, in a moment. Um, another reason I've seen before is because people are swamped with orders. Um, this is um, not, I'm gonna say it's common enough for me to put it on this list while I've seen it and they need to decide whether or not they should put it on vacation or extend processing time so they could catch up, okay? So swamped with orders. I say swamped because, you know, you may feel like you're swamped. Somebody else may not feel like they would be swamped with the same amount of orders, but it's overwhelming for you where you worry that if you keep continuously taking orders, you won't be able to fulfill the ones you currently have on time. You get what I'm saying, right? Or you'll be a hot mess and working all throughout the night. Um, and last but not least, where you feel like you need a break or you feel burnout, where you're just like, I'm done. Like I could keep up with these orders. I am keeping up with these orders but you just had enough, like you're exhausted. Um, many people felt that way um, shortly after Christmas. Or if you just need a break because for whatever reason, maybe you're just going through something and you just need a break, okay? Because um, running a business, you know, run, filling orders, all this stuff is still intense, okay? So those are the reasons I commonly see. Um, <clears throat> I'll see what everybody else says. Becca says, I went out of the country for 10 days and extended my processing times. Sandy says, I have never gone on vacation mode in 10 years. Um, just extended processing times and notes within my shop. You know, it's funny. I laugh at that because I could say the same ever since I opened my shop. I only went on vacation mode once. And it was literally for a day. It was when I gave birth to my second child. Um, when I had my first kid, I didn't have an Etsy shop yet. My second kid, I... but. So the reason why I went on vacation for one day, because I realized how easy it was for me <laughs> to, to give birth and recover. Like it wasn't, like it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, so I didn't really need to go on vacation. So anyway, and back then I wasn't as busy as I am now. So I was able to pop upstairs, fill a few orders and be done. Like, so I pretty much don't go on vacation, but again, more about that as to why in a moment. Okay. So those are the reasons um, I see people wanted to go on vacation and the biggest reasons why people question whether they want to go on vacation mode or extend processing time because they're scared that their their shop is going to fall off the face of the earth, okay? That is the biggest concern. Or they actually don't know what the risks are and they're like, yo, which one should I do, you know? Um, and here's the thing. We know the way the algorithms work. We may no longer get found in search if we go on vacation, okay? Um, but we've, like I said, we've heard both sides. Somebody saying, oh, I came back from vacation and within two days my sales started flowing in again. And then we've seen people say, when I came back from vacation, my, my shop fell off the face of the earth. You know, don't do it. You know, so you have to think, think about, you know, why is it that some people have different experiences with going on vacation mode or not? Um, and which one is true? Um, so let me explain um, something to you 
as to why this happened. This is really important for you to understand so you can make a decision for yourself because I'm about to give you some more tips regarding it, but these tips will be relative to each person, okay? Um, meaning, yes, I could go on vacation mode for a week and get back to the top of search like this, but you may not be able to get back to the top of search. Let me explain why. So <clears throat> imagine you sell a cat mug and the cat mug was found on the top of search for the phrase cat mugs. Okay, so people are searching for you. That's how you get sales. Um, that's, that's the biggest concern we have that we're not getting found via organic search. And so this cat mug, imagine this is a cat mug. When somebody searches for cat mugs, you get found on the top of search. Okay, but imagine now that you go on vacation for five days. Okay, now, as you know, when you search for cat mugs, you're not, you're not the only one in search. You have other people around you. Okay, so if your competitors outsell your sales number for this item, this cat mug, by a substantial amount, okay, you may be kicked out of the top page when you return. Now, going on vacation for a shorter period of time will better your chances of not having competitors beat you out because it's less days of them trying to gather more sales to beat you, okay? So imagine this cat mug and me, you know, um, I went on vacation for five days and my competitors on average have sold a thousand more units during these five days. Just imagine cat mugs are popular. Okay. A thousand units in five days. Um, you know, on average, each of my competitors, but if I only went on vacation for two days, they might have only sold 300. So of course, you know, it gives me a better chance to rise to the top back again, fairly quickly compared to me going longer. Does that make sense? However, if your cat mug, for example, a long time ago, not too long, but whatever, you know, went viral at one point, um, and you have maybe hundreds and hundreds of more sales than your competitors on average that are around you in search, leaving on vacation may not hurt you because your quality, your listing quality, you've heard of that before, right? Conversion rate, sales, blah, blah. Your listing quality is fairly high. It would be hard to beat you out. Here's the issue though. Here's the big issue. You don't know how you do compared, or how you're doing for your cat mug, compared to your competitors. You know how you do in general. You're like, oh, I sell this a lot. But what is a lot? What if, you're, what if your competitors are selling thousands more each day? Thousands more each day, right? Then you're not doing so hot, right? Maybe for yourself, you're content with your sales. So it's hard to gauge because you don't know 100%. There's ways to kind of check. We'll discuss that in a second. Um, you don't kind of know how well they're doing. Like if I knew I was the top seller and everybody eats my dust in the search results, then I would probably go on vacation mode. Well, I like to make money while I'm on vacation. So I probably wouldn't personally, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hesitate to go on vacation mode if I really need to. We'll discuss the dire reasons why you probably would need to anyway, but in a minute. So it's, it's relative to, um, it's com compared to your competitors. Now, again, you can't compare because don't know how well they sell. So what do you do? Well, you know, sometimes you can gauge it and see like if you have a bestseller tag and you have many people around you, the bestseller tag, um, you know, you could probably say, okay, I'm with them, give or take. You don't want to go too long because then they might beat you. Um, however, if you're the only one that has the bestseller tag in that category for that type of item and nobody else has it, you probably have a better chance. Again, this is, this is not a definite black and white answer. Okay. Cause there's no way to fully gauge it, or there's no formula to gauge this. Okay. You need to kind of go off what, you know, you have a better chance if you don't have the best seller tag. You can also use E-rank guys. Um, there is a feature where, um, uh, it's a competitive competition feature for their sales. You could check and you could track shop sales for multiple shops. And yes, it won't be per for the item. Okay. But you could see, Oh, shop X, Y, Z has sold on average 20 orders a day. I sell 25, you know, I'm give or take with them. But if I sell 30 orders a day, somebody sells only five orders a day and people around me in search sell five orders a day, I'd probably have, you know, even if I went on vacation for a few days, it wouldn't be detrimental to my business. Okay. So again, <clears throat> it's all relative to the people around you in search. Now, this will also depend for another reason on when you leave for vacation. Why is that? My slowest month of the year, guys, is February, March. 
and uh, August, September. Yeah. August, September. Those are the slowest months of the year for me. And, and, and probably for my competitors as well, give or take. So if I went during mother's day on vacation, I put my shop on vacation mode. My competitors will get a leg up on me very quickly. Why? Because naturally during that time frame, not Mother's Day, but like the period where people still can buy for Mother's Day, if I want on vacation then, naturally orders increase during that time, which gives them a quicker leg up on me while I'm on vacation, you know, sipping iced tea on the beach, right? If I went during an off season time or took vacation mode or whatever on an off season time, my competitors naturally won't get much more sales on average. Okay. So let's talk about this cat mug. Dahlia with the cat mug. I'm selling the cat mug. I go on vacation during the time where people buy Mother's Day gifts. If I go on vacation, it's no longer in search. All my competitors around me are selling tons, tons more on average. So now they have put, they have, you know, their numbers are more hefty. So when I come back from vacation, it's not Mother's Day season, right? I could still catch up slowly, but it's going to be difficult because now they have had many more sales. Do you guys follow? Do you guys follow? I hope you do because it really does also depend on when you're going on vacation. If you if you choose, you know, if you're wondering should I go on vacation mode or not, I highly uh, I, I highly discourage it when you're, to, you know, to do that um, when you're going during a very high busy season time. Okay, uh, your competitors can really demolish you by having much more sales, rising their listing quality. Um, so when you come back, it'll be hard to play catch up. Okay, so good morning. So does everybody follow? Let me know down below. Um, just kind of giving you like some um, some good foundational information of understanding how some people have different experiences than others when it comes to people coming back from vacation. I'm, I'm explaining the reason why people have different, um, different experiences. Some people come back, no problem. Sales coming in, some people come back, they lost their, their rank, you know? So that's, that's what I want to explain. Now, here's what I automatically say. My go-to answer is if you could extend processing times, and the situation allows for it, do it. That's my go-to answer, okay? Um, because it just takes away the risk. You're still flowing in sales, even if it doesn't take you that long. Let's say if you extend processing times, you know, two weeks in total, but still, it only takes you five days. Boom, you're ahead of schedule. Anyway, it's all good. You may lose some sales because your extent, your processing times are very long, but that's better than not having sales at all. So you shouldn't worry about that particularly. Okay. Now, another suggestion is if you are doing this because you have an influx of orders or you're burnt out or whatever, my next recommendation besides extending processing times, you could do this with a mixture of this next thing I'm about to say, or could just do one of these is increasing your prices. Okay. It's a strategy that many people do during the holiday season when they just can't keep up. We tell them, hold, the, hold your horses, increase your prices. Okay, so that's another alternative, okay? Now, the last alternative I have, guys, is to hire. <laughs> now, it, you know, not everybody could hire, I understand. If you are so swamped, and this is a regular occasion for you that you're swamped, you're swamped, you're swamped, then why haven't you hired already? Um, if you're just going on vacation, you know, it's nice to go on vacation when you have somebody working for you and you could just like, whatever. Me and my husband went to the movies on Friday. Yeah, Friday we watched Bad Boys. It was awesome. Um, and we were able to leave because my assistant here was working. We don't have to, you know, worry about this or if we have to go somewhere, long weekend, et cetera. So if you have the, if you have the resources, the money, the whatever to hire, I'd recommend you do so. You know, there's a lot more that goes into it, obviously, um, number crunching and stuff like that, but that wouldn't have you in a position where you decide whether you should extend your processing times or not. Okay. So <clears throat> now let's go over in detail each of these situations that I mentioned. So you could make a decision. Okay. That is right for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before I do, let me read these comments. Um, Lee says, timing is a good point. I'm attending the APA International Expo in Vegas in February, slow period on pondering vacation processing times. Now for Lee, and you guys can tell me your own situation down below. 
for lead, like I said, my go-to answer is extend processing times. Always, always, always. But if for some reason Lee's like, I can't because of X, Y, Z, whatever that may be, then I would feel more comfortable with Lee putting her shop on vacation mode because she's going during a slower period. And also depends on how long you're going. Obviously, like I mentioned earlier, the longer you go, the more risk you put your shop in, right? Because each day gives your op competitors an opportunity to get more sales, okay? So, so that's that. Now, um, well, that's that. So Heather says, I extended my shipping time on Amazon to 14 days starting December 20th and turned my campaigns off so I wasn't spending boatloads of money while I was taking some time off. For Etsy, I changed my turnaround time two to three weeks starting December 20th. Okay. First time I've ever done this in a long, quite a long time. Now my shops are down from last year and I'm struggling to get rank back. Um, while I'm enjoying some downtime, I'm beginning to wonder if I should have done something different. Does it matter, Heather? It's in the past now, right? Yes, you could have, you could ponder it for reasons to not do the same thing in the future. But, you know, it's funny because she took the time off um, during what people consider starting to get slower. However, some people see that even after December and through January, it doesn't become slower. Okay. Um, and the reality is, Heather, is it because you went on vacation or is it because it's naturally a slower time for you now? You know, a lot of people like to compare, but it's important to compare exact time to last year and say, did this really hurt me? Or is it just naturally supposed to be slower? Okay. Um, so let's go into the examples that I have for you. So situation one is going on vacation. If you physically won't be at work for a while, okay, um, I would, for, so if you're going longer than X amount of days, meaning for Amazon, you can't extend your processing times past 30 days. Okay. So if you're going longer than 30 days uh, physically on vacation or anything you're trying to do and you're like, I need more than 30 days off. Let's say if you're having a baby, you need more 30 days off, whatever, then you'd probably have to go on vacation. That's like a black and white situation. Right. Um, uh, but if you're just not going to be physically at work for a shorter period of time, um, and I think Etsy's processing time, I, can somebody tell me down below Etsy's max processing time that you're able to do? I don't know, but let me know down below. And by the way, having a longer processing time still may hurt you in rank. You sometimes may be better off just putting your shop on vacation because your sales will slow down anyway, but just consider that. But um, my automatic answer, guys, is always to first consider your extending your processing times, even if you're going on vacation, because regardless, you still have to answer your messages, especially on Amazon. They tell you to answer within 24 hours. On Etsy, it's just good customer service to do so. Um, you know, you don't want to end up having that customer purchase and they end up giving you a bad review because it's like, Oh, I got the product. Great. But was not very responsive during messages. You just don't know. It's really just good to answer messages. And when you're running your own business, we're never really on vacation, right? Um, unless you have somebody fully working for you, you could, you know, step away. Um, so yes, when you get back from vacation, you may have piles of orders. If you decide to actually physically go and put your shop you know, on extended processing times, um, that you have to deal with. Um, so that stresses you out and you want no part of it. Meaning you go on vacation, you extend processing times, you come back sw swarms of orders, right? If, if you literally are like, no, that is not why I built my business. I do want, I don't want any part of that. I don't care what you say, Dahlia. That's a little intense, but if, if that's who you are, then fine. <laughs> Put it on vacation. If you don't want to walk back in too many orders. However, I, I encourage you in any of these situations, you're more than welcome to put extend processing times. If you start to, if you start, if you start to see like many orders come in and you're like, I don't want to come back to this. You could then say, okay, shut down shop. Right. What I'm trying to do is gradually, you know, gradually bring you into vacation mode if you really need it. Okay. So just because you extend your processing time doesn't mean you can't all of a sudden shut down shop and put vacation mode. Okay. Unless you're hundred percent sure that you don't want to extend processing times, right. For particular reasons. Okay. Um, so, but potentially dealing with the risk of not being indexed right away. Um, if you go on vacation, so you have to consider that. Okay. So if you're a top seller and been on the first page for a very, very long time, the risk is minimized compared to somebody who has not been on the first page for a very long time. What is very long? That could, that could, be, that's, um, so here's a funny thing. I can't give you an answer, right? So, you know, if you've been on the, let's just say this, 
If you've been on the first page for several weeks, that is not a very long time. If you've been on the first page for several months, not a very long time. If you've been on the first page for six months plus eight months over a year, that's a longer time. So I'm kind of giving you something to gauge, but it really also depends on your competitors as well. Okay. So if, you know, <clears throat> the risk is minimized. And again, all depends on the other factors, how long you're going for, if you're going during an off season, et cetera. Okay. So again, if you're physically not going to be at work, first consider extending processing times. But if you're like, nope, I, I cannot um, <clears throat> for whatever reason, then just remember the risks involved. Okay. Situation number two is family emergency. Again, family emergencies can vary quite a lot. Uh, I, you guys can think of examples for yourself. Um, you know, particularly it has to deal with, you know, health, uh, I would say, um, and, and things of the sort. Um, so here's the thing, you know, like I said, my go-to answer is always extend processing times, but that will really depend on the um, family emergency, you know, itself. If, you know, it, you know, it, I'm not going to start being a Debbie Downer during this Facebook Live, but, you know, there's some things you just know you have no reason to be taking care of your shop at this moment when this family emergency is happening. That's for you to decide. It doesn't matter of all the risks and and extending and, and all this stuff I'm trying to tell you, if, if the family emergency is bad enough, none of that will matter. Right. And so, and so if, if you still are in the mindset to consider either one, then you yeah, extend processing times and then kind of gauge it as time passes by. But a lot of times people tend to be, again, depending on what it is in emotional distress. Um, and they don't want anything to do with filling orders and it, it, you know, it depends if you're in the hospital 24 seven with a family member for yourself, you know, um, it might be very difficult. So you just don't know when you're going to come back. You don't know when this family emergency is going to resolve. You know, sometimes that is probably best to put, um, to put on, um, to put yourself on vacation mode because that stress can, it's a hot mess. Okay. Um, and I actually, interesting enough in my example, I actually didn't put one of the examples and I'll, I'll mention it as situation number six in a moment. Okay. Situation number three is kind of like situation number two is having a baby. Um, you know, it's not a family emergency, but it is something, um, this is certainly a great time to take a break, obviously, but if you don't have many orders coming in and like, you know, if you're a slower, sh slower shop, um, and you don't mind just extending processing times, I would recommend you do so then go for it. It's really up to you. You could gauge it. When I had my last kid, uh, uh, she's uh, seven now. It's been a while. Um, I wasn't busy at all. Like I wasn't that busy. I probably had an order or two or three a day, which is not a lot. I was able to fulfill those. And my processing time was not within one day. Like now I get orders printed and shipped within one to two business days. So I was able to extend, especially after I put my shop on vacation mode. And I realized after I came back from the hospital, I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm fine. You know, <laughs> I was able to fulfill orders. So I just, I took it off and, you know, I didn't even extend processing times. I just left it. It was easy for me. Cause again, I didn't have many orders to fulfill. Okay. Um, if you, but if you see during this time um, that things are not going as planned, you could obviously opt to then put your shop on vacation mode and say, you know, the baby's giving you a hard time. You had triplets, like there's a lot going on. You just don't know, you know, everybody is different. Um, so you have to decide for yourself and it could be very hard to decide when you haven't had the baby yet. Um, you could always put vacation mode like first, like I did. And then when next day or two, when you realize everything's okay, like you can still kind of do some things. It's up to you. Okay. This is obviously very personal. Now situation number four is swamped with orders. Setting processing times or increasing prices, like I mentioned earlier, or both, um, is probably a really great idea. However, if you are concerned with catching up with the current orders that you've come in, that have come in, or the ones that come in later, let's say if you're swamped right now, but if you let orders still continue to come in, you are like, how am I supposed to complete those? It's a hot mess. Then maybe just putting on vacation mode for a period of time, um, you know, can help. Okay. Um, because what you don't want to do is send out orders late, particularly on Amazon. Now on Etsy, the ODR, you know, that percentage that tracks how well you do and all this stuff. Um, while it doesn't track shipments per se, I still recommend you don't ship late. Um, you know, it tracks customer service reviews, etc. You want to make sure that, you know, all these pieces of pie kind of mesh together. And so, if you're, if you're going to make those other new orders late, just go on vacation. Okay. 
Situation number five, guys, is when you just need a break or you're burnt out. Again, like I said, you know, I automatically go to extending processing times. This could resolve this ASAP. But you can extend it so far in advance that it will give you enough time to catch up with what you have and with current orders coming in because it'll be so far out extending processing times you don't have to worry okay um so this will get you enough time to get back to your normal self your normal routine for you to feel better okay as you could see if you could tell a little theme here i'm always going to recommend extending processing times unless it's a dire need situation number six which i failed to mention earlier why i have no idea is natural disasters i guess i mean listen you, you get the point natural disasters are really um you can't predict what will happen. You know, you just can't. And so I've had many members message me regarding it and they would ask me for my opinion. And it's very hard to give um, because you guys have probably heard around the US, right? We have our hurricanes, we have our tornadoes, we have a lot of things going on, flooding. Um, those are the ones I'm commonly used to because I live in Texas. And I'll tell you that we went through Hurricane Harvey a few years ago and we extended processing times. That was stressful. We actually did not lose power. Weird, because it was chaos here. Um, so we were able to still fulfill the orders um, on time. My husband had to drive to Austin to, to bring to the post office because our post offices were all closed. It was a lot of stress. You know, if, if I look back and, and look and see if another hurricane, you know, happened, what would I do? Um, I'd probably extend my processing time still longer. Um, you know, I didn't extend it that much. That was the issue because me and my husband were like, we don't want to lose out on sales. Um, but I'd probably extend it a little bit longer than going on vacation, especially, uh, well, no, both Etsy and Amazon. I, they both do really well for me. So that's what I would say. But you decide, you know, for me, just for the record, the reason why I decided if I lived in Houston, I probably would have gone on vacation. I probably would have got, I probably would have been flooded um, certain areas of Houston. I live in like outside of Houston and the ground level, I don't know what you call it, is higher. And so flooding doesn't really happen too often here. However, in parts of my neighborhood, it did. It was chaos, Hurricane Harvey, but my neighborhood did not. Um, anywho, but that still couldn't, you know, consider if, it'll say the electricity went out. It doesn't matter. But I think that's what I was thinking. And I'm not used to hurricanes because I'm from the North, you know? So I wasn't really thinking about it, but natural disasters are something that, you know, you can't plan for because you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You could always keep an eye and decide to go vacation mode, you know, while you extended your processing times originally, get orders out as soon as you can. I mean, there's a lot of things that you have to consider. I cannot for that one. That's a little difficult because you are worried about getting to the post office. You worry about your well-being, obviously, during a natural disaster. You're worried about um, filling orders and, and having um, electricity, all this stuff. Um, it could be hard depending on the natural disaster itself, okay? Because the hurricane could decide to turn and then hit your city instead, and you didn't expect it to get, maybe you just expect it to get, just get rain. Like, you just don't know. It's hard. That one's a hard one, okay? So, um, hey, so... I want to just go over those and, and I hope now you kind of have a better understanding of why, why some people have different experiences with going on vacation versus others. Why it really depends on the situation going on because I can't tell somebody, you know, go extend your processing time when they're going through a major family emergency, you know? Um, it, it just, it, it just, while I, while I would like for somebody to be working with them, um, and have fulfilled the orders, the reality is your health is much more important and, and your family's health is much more important, um, than your business. That's my opinion, but I think it's everybody's opinion. Um, and so it really just varies, but you could see that in many of my instances, I recommend extending processing times. It lowers the risk. Okay. Because, and while it's, it might take, uh, you know, a few days, a week, et cetera, to get back to the top of search, it may take longer. Now I'm gonna leave you with this, okay? A little tip here. If you decide to go on vacation, okay, bonus tip, and you're like, okay, Daya, I have no choice, I have to go on vacation or whatever. What should I do to get my shop back to the top? That's a really great question. Hold on a second. Okay. And so you have to remember that you, if you want vacation and you're longer on the top of search, it's because of your listing quality, okay? 
um, the algorithm no longer favors you at the moment. And so you have to say, okay, if it no longer favors me, what would it, what would it take for it to favor me? You know, the algorithm, you guys know this. I also discussed it in my Etsy SEO webinar and in my Amazon webinar, cause those two different online marketplaces that you sell, uh, the main ones, at least, um, that the algorithm, you know, really favors people who sell, <laughs> obviously, um, conversion rate, and depending on the platform you sell on, free shipping, you know, the, you know those factors, right? Um, so how do you say, okay, if the algorithm favors that, how do I get those? And so you have to get off vacation mode, obviously. And, you know, people ask me about renewing. Renewing is not as strong as it used to be. Um, you know, if I was super desperado, I would. Okay. I would absolutely would because that little notch may help. I think it's also important to, um, um, adjust your ads. So if you're on Amazon, hire your bids to get found more. So get that ball rolling again. I've done that once. Um, and I, well, I've done it many times, but when one of my items lost rank, not because of vacation mode, but just lost rank, I, I sped up the dollars and I got back up. It took several months, but I got back up. Um, and on Etsy, you can't increase the bids, but you can turn off the listings that don't perform well and leave on the listings that do perform well. So you're only really showing customers the the top, the hottest items, the ones that sell the best, okay? That have proven to sell the best, okay? So that's your ad strategy in a nutshell, obviously. Um, and so that's... Um, a few things you could do. You could renew, you could work on your ad strategy. Another thing you could do is point all engagement to these listings, point all customers to these listings. So if you have an engaged following, um, hang tight if you don't, but if you have an engaged following, meaning you have an email list, you have, whew, excuse me, you have um, a social media following that's actually engaged. Okay. That when you post they they look, they buy, etc. cetera, then I would start dra not dragging them. I would start directing them to your shop, to these listings. Okay. Obviously if you sell multiple places, you don't want to send them to Etsy and Amazon, Etsy and Amazon. That, that's confusing. Pick one, you know, it's, it's hard, but you want to do that because the more people that buy, the better the algorithm likes you. Okay. And of course, you know, it needs time. Okay. We could all be impatient when we're waiting for it to get to the top of search. Meaning if I noticed today that I'm long on the top of search, when I came back from vacation mode, I obviously want to be back on top of the search by tomorrow it may not happen. So patience is really important. Sticking, you know, sticking to the plan. Um, the biggest, um, boost people have seen is when they play with their ads. Um, yes, it costs money, but that's part of the game. Okay, why should Etsy or Amazon show you when you've been on vacation while your other competitors were selling? Okay, I know you might have been on vacation for a very good reason, but that's just how the algorithm works, okay? Um, so those are the biggest, the biggest things you could do to get back to the top. Okay. Now you can still do this next point. Um, even if you, if, if you do have an engaged following, but it said that if you use the Etsy sale feature and I'll talk about Amazon in a second, if you use the Etsy sale feature where it slashes the price and it shows you it's on sale, um, but you do it for 24 hours at a time. Um, it, cause it will show the sale ends in, you know, less than a day. It would, it would, um, give people the sense of urgency to buy. Meaning if I'm shopping for the cat mug and I saw your cat mug that you're trying to get, the top of searches. It's obviously only works for people that have viewed your item. Um, and so if I see it's on sale, but it's in the last only a day, I might buy. So this will help conversion rate um, because it's all about in comparison to views. Okay. You can do something similar on Amazon using their promotions feature. They have many different sale and promotion features on Amazon. There are some that are more effective than others. Um, the ones that are more effective cost money to use, um, which is a coupon feature. But Nonetheless, it's an option. Okay. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys next week on Tuesday for another Facebook live for another awesome topic. Okay, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you later.